Okay, you should have this paper out. It says ants, ants, ants. This one is going to be your homework, okay? We'll go over that in a second. First, we're going to look at these. It says, I see the ants. And there's one, two, and then one, two. So if I count them all together, I have one, two, and three, four. I have four ants all together. So Nicholas, how many ants do I have right here? Three. Good job. And how many ants do I have right here? One. Good job. So three and one make four. Good job. Cadence, how many ants do I have right here? Two. And how many ants do I have right here? Four. Good job. So two and four make what, Cadence? Six. Good job. Two and four make six. Oops. All right, Deleza, how many ants do I have right here? Three. And how many ants do I have right here? Two. So three and two make what, Deleza? Five. Good job. Three and two make five. Eli, how many ants do I have right here? Three. Good job. And how many ants do I have right here? Four. I mean three. Good job. So three and three make what, Eli? Six. Good job. Three and three make six. Landon, how many ants do I have right here? Seven. How many ants do I have on top, though? Three. Three, and how many ants do I have right here? Four. Good job. Three and four make what? Seven. Good job. Three and four make seven. All right, Paige. How many ants do I have on top? Six. Good job. Six and how many ants do I have on the bottom? Three. Good. Six and three make what, Paige? Nine. Good job. Six and three make nine. All right, Angela, how many ants do I have on top? Angela, are you there? Four. Good job. Four, and how many ants do I have on the bottom, Angela? Angela, how many ants do I have on the bottom?
How many ants do I have right there, Angela? I can't stop thinking of how you. Angela, four. can you hear me? Good job. Four and four make what, Angela? How many do I have all together? She did on me with Good job. Eight. Four and four make eight. All right, Nicholas, how many ants do I have on the top? Five. Want to count that again, buddy? One, two, six. There you go. Six. And how many do I have on the bottom? Six. Good. Six and six make what? Twelve. Good job. Six and six make twelve. So again, <clears throat> I hope you guys have this paper out because this is your homework, okay? Make sure you have this paper out. We're going to be doing the same thing we just did. Cruz, do you have a question? My mom's going to look for it. Okay, thank you. So make sure you have this paper out. First thing you do, make sure your name is at the top. I have it now. All right, awesome. Good job, Cruz. All right, make sure your name is at the top, always, okay? And it says, join the groups of ants to write how many in all. So I'm going to count this first one. I have one ant, two ant. And then one ant and two ant. I know I have two on this side, so I'm going to scoop up my two and keep counting. Two, three, four. I have four in all. Okay. I want you guys to finish the rest of this worksheet, and then we'll come together to check our answers, okay? So you may begin on that. Okay, we're going to go over our answers that we got on the paper. Okay. So I have one ant, two ant, three ants on this side, and one, two on the other side. Who would like to give me the answer for that one? Go ahead, Deliza. Five. Good job. There are Five ants in all. Good job. Okay. I have one ant, two ant on this side, and one, two, three, four on this side. Cadence, what did you get for this one? Six. Good job. There are six ants in all. Right, there is one, two, three, four, five on this side, and one, two, three on this side. Cruz, what did you get for this one? Eight. Good job. There are eight ants in all on that one.
There's one, two, three, four, five ants on that side. Then one, two, three, four, five ants on that side. <clears throat> Eli, what did you get for this one? Ten. Good job. There are ten ants in all. There is one, two, three, four ants on that side. And one, two, three ants on that side. Landon, how many did you get for this one? What is this one? Seven. Good job. There are seven ants in all. You guys did awesome on that. Double check your work. And that is all done. This book is called Penguin Special Delivery. Milo was the youngest in a long line of penguin post penguins, but he wasn't going to be the youngest for long. Mom had laid an egg and soon there would be another little penguin in the post office. Milo wasn't sure how he felt about this. When will it hatch, he asked. Soon, said his mom. There's the egg. <clears throat> but the egg still hadn't hatched when Milo's mom had to go out on a food-finding expedition. That meant somebody had to sit on the egg, and that meant somebody else had to, li had to deliver the mail. There goes his mom. You sit on the egg, said Milo's dad. Eli, do you have a question? I was seeing your dog looking at the window, and then I saw his little tail. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so you sit on the egg, said Milo's dad. No, I wanted to deliver the mail, said Milo tipping over the bag and grabbing a large parcel. With a sigh, Milo's dad laid the egg down and stuffed the mail back in the bag. Milo read the address on the parcel. Ursula Major, 11 Glacier Glade, The Pole, BR55RR. <clears throat> Milo set off across the ice until he reached the gate of number 11. He watched as Mrs. Major opened her parcel. What are those feathers for, he asked, chasing a handful across the garden. I'm going to fill a quilt for Baby Bear with them, explained Mrs. Major. How's the egg? Not hatched yet, said Milo. There she is with her parcel. The next parcel was soft and squishy, and absolutely enormous. The label read, Mama Oose, Treetop Skating Lane the Pool, SL1 PPY. Slipping and sliding, Milo made his way uphill to treetops. Mama Oose was waiting for him. At last, she said, Baby Moose Line will be so pleased. How's the egg, by the way? It's still an egg, said Milo, hauling the parcel inside. There's Mama Oose. <clears throat> Mama Oose cut the string. Snip! Tore the brown wrapping paper. Rip! Lifted the lid on the box. Creak! And took from the tissue paper. Scrunch! A stinging, ringing moose papoose. When Milo left, Mama Oose was still trying to work out how to put moose line into the papoose. It looks like it's a way to hold your baby.
<clears throat> For me, squeaked Miss Triffle, ripping open the package as soon as Milo handed it to her. Out fell a tiny sleep suit. Mrs. Trifle sighed. It's the wrong color. Baby Tiffany would look like a hairy raspberry in this. How's the egg? Milo sighed. It hasn't hatched yet. The next parcel was the most peculiar shape. Milo read the label, label and groaned. The cool cat. Dustbin number eight. One chilled hill. The pool. M-E-1-O-O-W. And it looks like meow. Cool cat. Cat wasn't the problem. It was Cool Cat's kittens. They scratched and squeaked and meowed all day long. Milo really hoped the egg wouldn't do that. When he reached number eight, Milo put the parcel on the dustbin lid and ran very fast. The sky was growing dark and Milo wanted to go home. He peered into his mailbag. Only two more parcels to deliver. He pulled out a small back box addressed to Stella Polaris over the pool, the Milky Way, the cosmos, the universe. Milo sighed. That was a long way away, but the mail had to get through. So he walked across the ice through the forest and up the rickety rope ladder to the lonely place in the sky where Stella Polaris lived. Up, up, up. That must be Stella Polaris. Miss Polaris, he called. I have something for you. Thank you, Milo, she said. I hope this is what I think it is. I've been waiting such a long time. Stella Polaris opened the box. Inside was a tiny glass bottle. Look at all those stars. It is, she cried, unstoppering the bottle and sprinkling its contents across the sky. Milo rubbed his eyes. In front of him, the darkness was peppered with little lights as the sky filled with thousands of baby stars. Thank you so much for delivering my babies, Milo, Stella Polaris said. What a star you are. Make a wish any wish and it will come true. Milo watched Stella Polaris hug her babies tight, and then something in the mailbag gave a loud crack. The egg! Suddenly, Milo knew exactly what to wish for, to be back home with his family. <clears throat> Uh-oh, so that he didn't have the egg after all. With the egg held safely in his arm, special delivery, he called. For us, asked Milo's dad. I love surprises in the post. Let's unwrap it. I think it's unwrapping itself, said Milo. Mm -hmm. I'm back, called Milo's mom, coming over for a hug. How's the egg? It's a boy, said Milo. Good heavens, said Milo's dad, reading the label on the parcel he'd been keeping warm all day. To a very special big brother. Now who in the world could that be? Oh, and there's the baby brother. Looks like the parcel was for him. The end. Did you guys like that story?